Hello and welcome to a new vlog. I'm starting at an odd time because I have kind of an event tonight. Um, yeah, I am going to a Titanic Last Dinner reenactment, kind of an historical thing. They're going to talk about um, local people in my area who actually were on the Titanic and survived and like the history of it and we're gonna have a dinner with the menu being what was actually served on the titanic for their last meal so yeah definitely looking forward to it excited about it i'm gonna try and film as much as i can there for you and i just decided to go with um chanel pearls and my a little black dress it's a little long like below the knee and um just took my double flat bag and I think it's going to be warm, but I'm going to take um, a blazer. I put a brooch on just for a jacket in case it gets chilly later. But yeah, that's how I'm kicking off my weekend. It is a Friday night and I'm excited to go um, see what it's all about. And it's going to be a blast, I think. So, all right, let me take you along. Happy Monday. So this video is going to be a little different because the way I film that, um, I think I need to like pop in and do some explanation or something. Um, I thought it was going to be a reenactment. It was not actually a reenactment per se, but it was a historical talk about history of the Titanic and local people who survived, which I was right about that part. And they did serve, um, menu items from the last um, menu, which I popped in a picture of the menu that we were given. Um, the food was absolutely delicious. I'm so glad that I went, but it was not actually per se a true reenactment. So a lot of the clips that I have um, from the other night were actually just um, like historic talk. So if that's not your thing, I apologize for that, but I found it very informative and enjoyable. It was a lovely evening. I hope that they do do it again, although I think if it's the same history talk, um, I probably wouldn't do it on an annual basis because I already got the talk now, but um, I definitely think that if they do it again, you should try and check it out. If you are nearby, it was definitely worth going and it was a wonderful evening. And again, like I said, the food was delicious. The wine is always delicious up there at Green Eagle. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out. And Friday night was actually the anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. It was on the actual night. So that was kind of cool in itself too to just celebrate like a memorial to that or what have you and they did give us an envelope which i'll tell you about later that told me if i survived or not um so i'll share with you what's in this envelope after i didn't film when i got back at night so i'll close out with showing you the envelope but yeah it was a lovely night and um i've got some clips here of like different 
historical aspects of it. She was a wonderful speaker as well. She was from the um, Mahoning Valley Historical Society in downtown Youngstown. And yeah, let's just dive into it. Smoking room, a more modest second class entrance, and then some different deck areas um, for first class passengers, the engineers, and the second class passengers. Now on the A deck, coming down one, we're now on the promenade deck. This is res uh, reserved exclusively for first class passengers. This contains some of the first class cabins, but there's a lot of things that I think Hollywood has taken over and stories have taken over in our minds. And I'm probably going to be busting some myths tonight as well. <laughs> so hopefully I don't break any hearts of something you really believed in. Um, so let's do a little tour here of some spaces on the ship. We'll start with some third class spaces. <clears throat> now in third class, or what some people will refer to as steerage, this is honestly better than first class accommodations on most ships at this time. Um, any, everything on the ship was the pinnacle of luxury. So in third class, you have common spaces, you have common dining rooms. Um, those uh, names are not listed there. So now we're gonna go in a completely different direction. I'm going to introduce you to the other family aboard the ship. This is the family of Shanihi Abisab. She um, is born and raised in um, Syria, present day Lebanon. I'm not going to give you a political history of Syria and Lebanon, just search it if you're curious. Um, she marries her husband, uh, Thomas. Why is the radio crew not sending those messages to the ship's uh, crew? Um, well, primarily, the radio crew doesn't work for the ship. How many guys knew that? So, they're not personally that. So, the wireless crew aboard the ship works for the Marconi Wireless Company. They do not work for the White Star Line. So, they are not making money unless they are sending messages back and forth for passengers. Are they going to send safety messages to the crew? Of course they are, if it's something really serious. It's their lives too, right? They're on that ship, they care. But they are not gonna be as heavily involved with that kind of messaging that you might expect. Other things to keep in mind, not every ship has a wireless crew. Some ships only have one guy and he might be asleep. So there's a ton of things that can be going on when this is all happening. Um, there are also some interesting things happening in the atmosphere. Am I the nerd that watched an hour long meteorology special about Titanic? Yeah, um, I didn't understand any of it, but it was fascinating. And the best way I can describe it, number one, there's no moon, it's pitch black. Number two, it is so clear. So you think, oh, it's clear, you should be able to see. No, if it's clear, that's when things start to get wavy. It's when your eyes start to not be able to focus. Um, if you think about being at the top of a hill and you look down and you see a light, that light looks like it's flickering, right? Mm -hmm. But you know that light is solid. You know that light's not flickering, but it's how light travels in waves to your eyes. So even if these guys saw an iceberg, they might not see it in time or they might not see it at all. So there's a lot of perfect storm things happening that evening. Now it's 11.59, or excuse me, 11.39, when Frederick Fleet is up in the lookout and he will spot an iceberg. He calls down to the bridge to inform James Moody of what he sees. He says, is anyone there? They shout, yes, what do you see? And then rather famously, he shouts iceberg right ahead. So what's going to happen immediately, they're going to try to stop and turn the ship. She's big, she's fast, she's going relatively full speed at this point. She's going to come back to bite her a little bit. Um, so they will try to execute a full turn. They put the ship's engines into reverse to not only stop but to start to slow her down. And she's going to start to turn. But less than a minute later, she strikes the iceberg on the starboard side. She'll scrape along that iceberg for several seconds, and within a few minutes, the engines are stopped. They wave goodbye to each other, and that was it. That's the end of when they see their father and husband. So a few other people are gonna make lifeboat eight kind of interesting, um, including the Countess of Roths, it's kind of cool. Um, and we have a couple other people there, like Emma Bucknell, 
if you're familiar with Bucknell University, Pennsylvania, um, her husband was the founder of that. But one of the more interesting stories about Lifeboat 8 that the Wick women will witness is the story of Isidore Ida Strauss, who you see in this picture. So these are the Strausses of the Macy's Corporation. She is given a place aboard the lifeboat, and so is he. But he will state, I don't want any special treatment. Nothing afforded to me that would not be afforded to another man. So what happens? He gives up his spot on the lifeboat. And then Ida will say, well, so we have lived, so we will die. And the two of them walk back to their stateroom together. And if you're familiar with the film, that is them, where you see them huddled together in bed as the water rushes in. James Cameron takes that story from the Strauss's. And the Wick women, who we've talked about, watch that happen as they walk back to their deck or to their cabin. So what's happening with Janine? Uh, so when she hears the passenger muster, it's even more. So she will give an a, a interview later. So spoiler, she survived. Um, so she gives an interview later where she says, men, women, and children were storming the hallways. I remembered my three cousins who were on the boat too. I ran to their room. They were gone. In the hallway was the 14-year-old girl, Benora Ayub, a relative of one of my cousins. I grabbed her and pulled her with me. We were all ordered to put on life preservers. The sailors and men passengers pushed and pulled us up to the deck. Lifeboats were being lowered when we arrived there. I saw George Joseph, one of my cousins. He pushed me towards one of the lifeboats. Sailors armed with revolvers drove the men away from the boats, shouting women and children first. They shot into the air to frighten the men. Benora and I were placed into the next to last lifeboat to be lowered from the ship. When it lowered, frightened women, fearing it would capsize, jumped from it. So her story, she talks about being in her nightgown, she talks about being incredibly cold, um, women trying to burn their clothing um, on that lifeboat to try to give themselves some warmth. Um, and she also will mention um, that aboard her lifeboat is Bruce Ismay. So you might be wondering, all right, so he's the chairman of the White Star Line, what's he doing there? Um, he is the highest ranking official to survive. He will get a lot of flack for this. A lot of people say he should have gone down with the ship, um, and he will struggle with this decision the rest of his life. So you might be wondering to yourselves, for that seems like not enough, because technically from Youngstown, so that's technically not wrong. With the George family, you have Shanihi, who was a resident of Youngstown. Her three cousins and the cousin's niece are not. But either way, they're still only saying four. And when they talk about the four, they're only talking about the Wicks. There is never a mention of Shanihi in a single Youngstown Vindicator newspaper. And we're going to talk about that as we keep going. By the evening of April 15th, we have an extra newspaper. Extras were when, uh, you know, without television and like Twitter, they couldn't just throw out a breaking news. They put out a new newspaper at the end of the day. So we have this extra paper here that says pretty accurately about 675 were saved. No word of the Youngstown travelers aboard. <laughs> we do have the first reference here to the possible loss of Colonel George Denick Wick. Now in this particular issue, we start to get a little bit more accurate information. All right, well, I know that those were just short clips and not like a whole story, but um, it's the way I was able to film with the staff walking around serving us and everything. So I hope that you did enjoy it. Plus, I didn't want to give away too much in case you are nearby and um, end up going. Or maybe, I mean, I think this is kind of a thing now. Um, so maybe there's events like that near you. They gave us a copy of that menu um, that I showed at the beginning. We had um, four courses and they were absolutely delicious. But they also gave us a copy of the original 1912 menu. And there were 10 courses on that. So um, what we ate were things that were pulled off of this um, menu. Like we had um, the chicken lionies, which was their fourth course. It was our um, second course. And then the um, we had roast sirloin. 
which for them, sirloin was the, it was part of the fourth course, filet mignon. Um, apple meringue, though, we had, which was delicious. Take on meringue. I've never had apple meringue, but it was delicious. Um, that was not on their list of desserts. That was the only thing that they went a little off menu for. But it was really cute that they tried to stick with the original and recreate that. Um, and like I said, the food was absolutely delicious. Uh, down in the comments, I will put a link to the winery. So I'm sure you can go back and look up like the information and um, follow them if you are local. Because I was talking to the owner and they're going to try and do this as like an annual thing. Um... But this was their first year, so I'm not too sure what the format's going to keep looking like. So if you follow them on Facebook, I'm sure they'll post it. And it also would have said who the caterer was. It was a local caterer who did this. So I'm not sure um, who they were. But if I was having an event out that way or something, I would hire them. They were very good. So to my envelope, um, you may have noticed or heard like in the um, story as she was going, one of these stories about the Strauss family. I think I did kind of film that to some extent, um, but they were not the Strausses of Youngstown department store. They were the Strausses of the Macy's department store in New York. I'm getting a tickle in my throat. Give me one second. Okay, thank you. Um, but yeah, my envelope gave me the assignment of Ida Strauss. I was Ida Strauss. So we were given um, a place on a lifeboat, my husband and I. Husband Isidore Strauss, not, okay. Um, and I got off the boat to be with my husband. So I am deceased. Um, my paper says, Isidore Strauss worked at L. Strauss & Sons, which became the Glass and China Department at Macy's. In 1888, he and Nathan Strauss became partners at Macy's, and in 1893, he and his brother bought a controlling interest in the Wechsler and Strauss, renamed Abraham and Strauss. By 1896, Isidore and his brother Nathan had gained full ownership of the R.H. Macy and Company. In 1871, Isidore Strauss married Rosalie Ida Blunn, and I had seven children with him. Seven children. All right. Um, traveling back from a winter in Europe, mostly that was spent in Cape Martin in southern France, Isidore and his wife were passengers on the RMS Titanic when at about 11.40 p.m. on April 14th of 1912, it hit an iceberg. Once it was clear the Titanic was sinking, Ida refused to leave Isidore and wouldn't get into the lifeboat without him. According to a friend and Titanic survival, survivor, Colonel Archibald Grace IV, when he offered to ask an officer if Isidore could enter the lifeboat with Ida. Isidore refused to be made an exception while women and children were still left on board, while Ida is reported to have said, I will not be separated from my husband. As we have lived, so we will die together. Ida gave her maid her fur coat and insisted that she got on the lifeboat. Isidore and Ida were the last seen on deck, arm in arm. Eyewitnesses describe the scene as a most remarkable exhibition of love and devotion. The ship sank at 2.20 a.m. Isidore's body was recovered and taken to Halifax in Nova Scotia and from there shipped to New York. He was first buried in the Strauss-Kahn's mausoleum at Bethel Cemetery in Brooklyn and was then moved to Strauss Mausoleum and Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx in 1928. My body, Ida, was never found, so a family collected water from the wreck site and placed it in an urn inside the mausoleum. Isidore and Ida are memorialized on a cenotaph outside the mausoleum with a quote from the Song of Solomon, Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. So I did not survive the Titanic Friday night. I went down with the ship all over love, but 
It is a love story. I think that was one that was um, actually in Titanic where the um, old couple like actually just goes in their cabin and gets back in bed and is holding each other as the ship goes down. So that was supposed to be based on Ida and Isidore Strauss. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Oh, wait, let's talk about George. Um, Shanita Abu Saab George, the other Youngstown woman. I think it showed about the Wick family and we know, well, if you're local, you know that the Wick family, except the women made it back. The um, husband did not make it back. But um, Isadora George, or not Isadora, Shanene George. Um, she was poverty when she got on the ship. She was coming back in third class. She had left her children here in Youngstown, went to Lebanon to take care of her husband because she thought that the drier air, or no, I think it was a son she went to take care of, some family member. She went to be caregiver, took him back to Lebanon, left young children here though um, at a boarding house, not even like with family here. She left him at a boarding house and she was impoverished. She made it back um, through a lot of like trip turns and trips and different places, never got mentioned in the paper until she actually did get made, like get back and reunited with her children. And then it wasn't even in the major paper, it was in like a side little small paper. So I guess because the Wick family was so rich and powerful in town, they got all the publicity and poor little Miss George got nothing. But the joke was on them because she ended up funding for her son who she, one of the children she had left in the boarding house to start a business. Um, they ended up moving across the line into PA and that business is still in business and they ended up becoming very, very rich themselves. They started the Joy Ice Cream Cone Company. So, jokes on them that she wasn't, you know, popular, publicized, or they didn't care about her when she was poor and went down with the Titanic because... She made it back and family became millionaires themselves uh, with that ice cream cone company. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, I hope that, you know, you got some little lessons, history lessons out of it. Um, if it intrigued you, look for things near you. I know, like I said, I think a lot of places are doing uh, different Titanic dinners. You'll have to wait probably till next spring now because of the anniversary and being in the beginning of April. But Definitely worth something to look into if there's something local to you. Or if you are from near here, definitely check out the um, Green Eagle Winery one. If they do it again next year like she was hoping to. I hope they do, though. I hope it works out for them and it's good. But um, I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed watching these little clips and this little talk and everything. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And I will see you next week with a regular weekly vlog. So until then, thanks for watching.